from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. In Detroit and the surrounding area, they have what they call the Dream Cruise. And the way they described it in the paper, the headline, Keep Cruising On This Year. Now, you know how many attended? One million attendants and 40,000 cars. Whoa, I think it's the largest in the world exhibit of cars and antique cars. It was something else. And then this moves my heart. Al-Qaeda training for terrorist attack using model planes. In other words, toy planes they're using for an attack. And tales of historic drought. Now, this is the worst that we've had in decades. And we will talk about the weather. Some of you are probably wondering how in the world he's going to connect all of those different things with the Bible. But Jack will, because it all points to the return of our Lord. But before we get into this, Jack was telling me about a similar uh, joke that he has told before about a woman who went to heaven. Right, Jack? Yes. Greeted at the gate with St. Peter. And then go on there, if you will. Oh, I just love this, and so many people request me to repeat this story. I probably did about a good year ago. But this lady died and went to heaven, and St. Peter said, before you can get in, you have to spell a word. She says, oh, no. He says, love, O-L-O-V-E, since you're in. Two weeks passed, and St. Peter said, would you watch the gate? I've got an errand to run. She said, sure. Well, her husband appeared. She said, honey. You followed me by two weeks, yes. She says, before you can get in, though, you have to spell a word. He said, what? She says, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy oh, would dear. never made it. Aren't you glad we're not saved by works? The Word of God says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 5. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. I, I am amazed, Jack, at how Jack you... Yeah. <laughs> Even with the joke, sometimes you can find a verse in the Bible, oh, yeah. I'll tell you. We are going to reiterate very, very quickly uh, something sort of as a, a lead-in to the program today, and that has to do with the two appearings of our Lord. Did you know there are going to be two appearings of the Lord Jesus Christ? And so we're going to deal with that right now. And uh, let's take a look, please. Here it is. Christ is coming again. What a promise. And then this is Jack's book, Earth's Golden Age. Whoa, coming soon. Dr. Jack Van Impey. Now, I'm going to ask Jack, just before we get into the rest of the uh, program here, pointing to some of the things going on in the world. I'm going to ask him if he'll once again explain the two R's, the rapture and the revelation, Jack, the two appearings of the Lord. All right. Before we get into the book of Revelation, let's look at what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. There is a coming for his saints to take us to heaven, and there's the return with his saints to bring us back from heaven to earth. John 14, 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare, prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's a picture of the rapture. Now, what happened seven years later? This is what Jesus taught us to pray concerning that hour in Matthew 6, beginning with verse 9. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's when he returns with us. Now we see the rapture in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, when a voice is heard crying out into the heavens, come up hither. Three words that we go to meet the Lord Jesus in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now, this is not his coming to earth. This is the meeting in the air. No one will see him at that time. Now, seven years later, they do. 
because Revelation 1, 7 says, He cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Not hard to do in a day of global television. But here is the picture of his return to the earth found in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, when he comes regally, royally, majestically on that white horse. Verse 11, to rule as the king of kings and lord of lords, verse 16, over all the earth for how long? 1,000 years, Revelation 20, verse 4. But then he is recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 24 to 28. And now his kingdom goes on forever and forever here in terra firma. Yeah, the world's never going to end. It's a world without end. Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21. Isn't that good news? So watch what happens here, Revelation 11, 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. We who did reign with him for a thousand years in Revelation 20, verse 4, now reign with him forever and forever. So you see, that is what is called his revelation, his revealing to the earth. The rapture was discussed earlier. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord near, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Rapture, come up hither seven years later. We return with him to this earth to rule and reign with him forever. Yeah, Jack, I was just sitting here thinking, what would it be like to be a disciple and hear the Lord talk about the Lord's Prayer for the first time? I've been praying that prayer all my life. But to hear Jesus say it mm -hmm. for the first time, oh my, oh my, they must have been so excited to think that their Savior was going to come back to earth again. But he did give them some very special signs along with that yeah. Lord's Prayer. Jack, g give us a few other signs. Well, you've right? heard me preach endlessly about the return of Christ. But the Holy Spirit awakened me August 19th at 4 in the morning until 6 and showed me that every major sign in the Bible ends with the verse about his return. Wow. For instance, in Matthew 24, 3, his disciples came unto him and said, Tell us, what shall these things be, Jesus, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? No, the end of the age. The world goes on. It's the end of the age of grace. The church age ends at that point. How do you know? Turn the page. Christ comes back to the earth. The world can end in that verse, Matthew 24, 3, if he comes back to rule and reign on earth, in chapter 25, verse 31, it says to those on earth who are saved, come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, verse 34. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to give you some signs as to when all this is going to happen. He said there should be false Christ and false prophets, Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, 24. He said there should be wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and divers places. Verse 12, iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. In verse 21, he talks about great tribulation coming upon the earth during the seven-year period of tribulation of Revelation 7, 14. He talks about the gospel being preached to every place in all the world, Matthew 24, 14, and said, when that happens, that's the end of this age of Greece. That's when I come in chapter 25. And Rexel and I are giving this message to every nation on earth every week, and we believe the coming of the Lord is right at the door. All right? But did he give a sign then? Yes. Jesus adds in Matthew 24, 27, As the lightning cometh from the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But wait a minute, there's something really exciting here. People say, oh, no one can know the day and the hour. Matthew 24, 36, wrong. Keep it in context. It begins with verse 33. Jesus said, you'll know when it's near, even at the door, but not the the day and hour, verse 36. Put 33 and 36 together and then you have the right message. There are two things that had to happen that never happened in the history of 2,000 years that have passed, but it's happened in our day. In that same chapter, verse 32, he says, the fig tree shall blossom. Mm -hmm. And the fig tree is Israel, and that's uh, Hosea 9, verse 10. 
Now, there was no Israel since 63 B.C. when Pompey came down and took the Jews to Rome, and they hadn't been back to their native area for 2,011 years till 1948 when they pull up the six-pointed star of David in the month of May, 14th of that month, and say, we call ourselves Israel. No sign could ever mean anything until there was an Israel and they had to capture Jerusalem, Luke 21, 24, and they were without Jerusalem as their own possession until the Six-Day War, June 5th, 10th, 1967. So they were not a nation for 2011 years. They did not control Jerusalem for 2,030 years. And he said, when you see all the signs, wait a minute, we've always had wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, how can that be a signs? So many backslidden Christians say. He said, when you see all the signs happening in connection with Israel being a nation and the Jews controlling Jerusalem, that's the hour I'm coming. So we won't know the exact moment, but near, even at the door. It's near, Rixella. It's near, for sure. We're going to be going on now to many of the signs very, very quickly. And here's one that you may not have connected with the return of the Lord. Keep cruising on. When I told you that there were one million in attendance for this dream cruise, it went from Ferndale to Pontiac, Michigan, 40,000 cars. My, oh, my, what a dream cruise it was. A lot of antique cars there. Now, Jack, a lot of people don't connect that. Cars with the coming of the Lord? How could that be? The rabbis of Judaism of old taught that a day would come when we would have horseless carriages. But it's not what you see the Amish have today, a buggy being pulled by horses. No, it's far more extensive. Listen to Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of Messiah's preparation to come to earth. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broadways, the highways. They shall seem like torches, headlights, and taillights, and they'll run like lightning. The old Amish buggies can't do that, but the automobiles can. Thank you, Henry Ford and Chrysler and all the rest. Oh, yes, Jack. Well, friends, let's look up in the heavens. And now planes flying, that signifies the coming of the Lord, too. But they are not all peaceful. Take a look. Al-Qaeda training for a terrorist attack using model plane. Now, that is actually a toy-looking plane, but it's not a toy. Rubber control. Well, believe me, yes. Model plane plot. Physics grad intent on attacking U.S. snake to plead guilty. Oh, boy. And here we go. Pentagon successfully tests hypersonic flying bomb and new Raytheon. Warhead lethal to enemy rockets. And then model plane bomb plot tests U.S. anti-terrorism strategy at home. We realize how very, very dangerous it is, friends. And we're trying to prevent this from happening. But is it in the Bible, Jack? Well, we have our supersonic jets. We have these toy models now, and they say they can put a bomb in one, and by remote control, smash it right into the White House and scores would die. We have rockets, hundreds of them flying into Israel daily from the Palestinian side through Hamas, Hezbollah. And we have these other things, missile-loaded nuclear weapons. You find that in Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Ezekiel 39, 6, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, and brimstone high through these flying missiles mounted with nuclear weapons. Well, that's in the Bible. Isaiah 60, verse 8. Who are these that fly like a cloud and as doves to their windows, to their homes? Pigeons know all of that. But this is the one. We're going to go to war over Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2, and Isaiah 31, 5 says, As the birds flying, so will the Lord defend Jerusalem. Bombs. Tax through great planes, toy models, and everything. You just heard the rockets. That just flies.
Wow. Oh, Jack, you know, I'll tell you, prophecy is certainly being fulfilled today, and we need to be looking up. And I would again say, are you ready? If the Lord came today, would you be ready? We're going to talk about that much more in just a moment. But last week, this is the last week for this wonderful offer, Revelation Revealed, verse by verse explained by Jack. And if you take a look, please. The Amazing Adventure of a Lifetime is suspensefully brought to light in Revelation Revealed. This 10-hour CD set is a phenomenal blockbuster verse-by-verse -verse study of the most prophetic book of the Bible. It is beyond science fiction, filled with fantastic glimpses of the world to come. Angels, beasts, dragons, villains, heroes, and the stunning latter-day events now happening at breakneck speed. Every verse is explained, emphasized, and clarified, making the book of Revelation amazingly understandable. It's all here. The intrigue, the deception, the battles, the suffering, the struggles, the despair, and most importantly, the glorious conclusion of a world that will never end, as predicted in Revelation Revealed. Oh, friends, I'm sorry. I have to say this is our last week. So there's the 800 number. There's the address. Please don't put it off. And with your order for the CD package where Jack explains every single verse in the book of Revelation, verse by verse, he explains it. You can't understand it. I'll send you this wonderful gift, his book on the book of Revelation. Okay. Believe it or not, what you're hearing today, you can have a complete study on by getting this. All these topics, a few hundred of them, and everyone ending with the sign that Jesus is coming. Oh, yes. There's so much that he talks about on here and explains. War in space, as America mentioned, demon worship, Armageddon, all the rest. We can't get it all on our program, but it's all here in the book of Revelation. With your order, my gift, the book that he has written, verse by verse explanation. Now, friends, you know what? I'm so sorry. We've experienced the worst, the warmest summer I think ever recorded in history. My heart really goes out to all of the people who've experienced a terrible, terrible setback. The worst drought in decades. How horrid is July heat record setting? And I'll tell you, it's been that way almost all summer. Here we go. Tales of historic drought. Feeling the heat in the midst of the worst drought in decades. Now, as I said, my heart is so moved, and I know yours is too, for everybody that's involved in this terrible, terrible drought. All right, let's just see. Does the Bible say that this would happen prior to the coming of the Lord? How about it, Jack? Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9, it says, The fourth angel poured out his bowl of judgment upon the sun, S-U-N, and power was given unto the sun to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with a great heat. Now something has to be done because people are going to die right and left because it's going to make what's happened to this point seem minuscule, minor. All right, Revelation 6, 12, I beheld when he'd opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon is blood. Carl Sagan said that could probably be a meteor, right, explosion that would throw dust into the heavens and make everything dark and black for at least three months upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, does the Bible teach that? Yes. Uh, where? Over and over. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun become darkened. It's there. Now, because of it, there are those who say, oh, well, God's going to have to shorten the days. He can't. Why? Because it's a seven-year period, Daniel 9, 27. And they had 360 days per year in the Jewish calendar. So seven years was 2,520 days. A half of that time was 1,260 days, Revelation 11, 6, and chapter 12, verse 3. So he is not able to shorten the days, but he can shorten the daylight hours, and that's exactly what happens. And I just quoted it to you a moment ago, and it's right at the end of the tribulation 
period, Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. Why? As an act of mercy. But you know what happens in the midst of all that darkness? Jesus comes back, verse 27, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. Christ is always there in the midst of every judgment to help us. I think before I get into this next article, I want to congratulate all the medical scientists because of the many advances that they have made to prevent and cure diseases. And I never dreamed, friends, that we would see what I'm going to show you right now, the return of surprising new diseases, one bacteria, 30,000 deaths, and there was nothing that they could do to prevent it. On insect wings, West Nile spreads faster. India in race to contain untreatable, hey, untreatable tuberculosis. Deadly bird flu, mutation sparks contagion concerns. And the killer Spanish flu, could it happen again? My goodness, there were millions that died before One, because of that. 50 million, 100 million, Rex. Right, and gonorrhea growing, resistant to drugs. Now, that's a sexually transmitted disease. Oh, my, how young people need to be restrained from what they do sometimes. Oh, my. And here we go. Sex on first date, 55% say they have. What I, you know, yeah, I'm very, very surprised about this too, friends. There are new diseases out there, or advancing the same diseases, no treatment for. They can't treat it, Jack. And you know, you pay for your sin. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6:23. Lust, when it hath conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. James 1:15. Now we've got gonorrhea. We got syphilis. We've got AIDS, and now they're discovering that this HVP that's in the throats of so many people, a cancer, is coming from oral sex. You cannot get away with your sin. Not only does it bring the first death, already quoted James 1.15, but also the second death, the lake of fire, Revelation 20, verse 14. And imagine, 55% of the people going out on dates now have sex the first day. Sodom and Gomorrah has arrived, and judgment of God is coming soon. And he said, Jesus speaking, there shall be pestilences, all kinds, they 25 in the last 25 years. And then he said it again in Luke 21, verse 11, but listen to this, Revelation 6, verses 8 and 9. He said, there was a pale, sickly looking horse. And he brought all kinds of sickness upon the face of the earth. And because of him, one-fourth of the population died because of hunger, sore, death. And the beasts of the field, most of these diseases come from beasts and viruses. And in the midst of it, our Jesus is coming back. How do I know that? Because the Redeemer shall return to Jerusalem, Isaiah 59, 20. And when he comes, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, the lame shall leap as an heart, and the tongues of the tongue-tied shall sing, Isaiah 35, verses 5 and 6. He's here because he came to heal. But there's one more, right Get Better into this last one on terrorism. All right, I certainly will. Very quickly, war and terrorism, now it is global. Let's Focus for a moment, especially on the Persian Gulf, all right? Persian Gulf Prime to explode. Iran funding terror camp in Iraq. Iraq. Iran preparing Mahdi's special forces. Ahmadinejad world forces must annihilate Israel. And Israel stirs on the eve of Middle East war. All right, there you have it, terrorism and war, Jack. If we did not know the Lord Jesus Christ was going to return soon, life wouldn't be worth living. Ahmadinejad of Iran is preparing a camp with 1,500 trainees in Iraq, 40,000 in his own nation of Iran, all to become suicide bombers, which they'll place in all the nations of the earth. And when they get here, they'll run into people with bombs in their bodies, and they'll die. And for that, they get 72 virgins for all eternity. God forgive that religion, a religion of peace. Baloney. Now listen to me. He's coming. He said, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries. Be not frightened. These things must first come. And we're seeing that they're coming. What then? Verse 27, 
Then shall the Son of Man, Jesus, come in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And when these things begin to come to pass, and they're going to start soon, look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of the body. He says, come up hither. And then he said in verse 30, one, when you see it happening full blast, and boy, that's all we're hearing anymore from Islam, you know that my kingdom is nigh at hand. In fact, this generation, this generation, you and me, who lives to see everything we've said today, shall not pass from the earth. Well, no one is near, even at the door. Oh, Jack, you can't get any better news than that. That the Lord is coming back to stop all of this terrible uh, chaos that we've been talking about on the earth. A lot of people don't even want to watch the news anymore. Let me just say, do you don't have to be frightened. Jesus said, when you see these things, let not your heart be troubled. Do you have the Lord in your heart? He wants to be there as your Savior, forgive you of anything there that you don't want there. Perhaps you're really involved in a lot of things that you don't want there. Maybe drugs, maybe alcohol, illicit sex, so many things around us. Do you want to be forgiven? Ask the Lord to come into your life. He'll be your Savior. Jack, would you pray that prayer, please? Let's calm our hearts, precious Jesus. God of love, God of mercy, that God who's the only Savior, in this world. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for going through all that pain and agony as your blood flowed from your wounds to wash me, cleanse me, and save me. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I'm asking you to come into my heart. I want to be ready for your return. Jesus, save me now. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please, there's my address. Write to me. Absolutely free. This whole book will be in the mail. First steps in a new direction. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive last week offer on Revelation. Chuck? My friend, to order Revelation Revealed, 11 audio CD set and book, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $39.95 to Jack Vanapee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $39.95 to Jack Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Last chance, Rex Ellen. There's the 800 number, there's the address. My gift with your order, make the call. Let me leave you with this wonderful thought. The glories of heaven will totally eclipse the trials of earth. Look forward to being in your home, and remember, God cares for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>